Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Pursuit Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Antonair, and in today's episode, we talk with Alan Samsel, pro staff member here at Vance Outdoors. We discuss his most recent trip to hunt mule deer in Colorado, as well as some tips to going on your first Western-style hunt and what kind of hunting trips he's looking forward to this year. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this conversation. All right, everyone. We are here with Alan Samson. How are you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Very good. And then not only with Alan, we got Mr. Ben Johnson here with us as well. Hey, guys. All right, man. Uh, so Alan is a pro staff member here at Vance Outdoors. Um, hunts just about everything, right? Yeah, Victor, a little bit. A little yeah. bit of everything. Uh, today, what I want to have him talk about, uh, he recently just came back from a trip uh, this past November, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, uh, to Colorado and do some uh, over-the-counter. Uh, no, it was mule deer's a draw tag. A dra- draw tag, mm-hmm. okay. So do some draw tag in, in Colorado. So we'll have him talk about that. Um, being a uh, Central Ohio guy, I'm sure there's some people interested and in always wanting to fulfill that like lifelong hunt, if you will, or that once-in-a-lifetime style hunt. Um, and just kind of what to expect if you're, uh, you know, a Midwestern guy headed out, headed out west to uh, to go hunt. So, without any further ado, man, uh, let's go ahead and introduce yourself and a little bit about your background, kind of what got you started in the hunting, and uh, we'll just keep going from there. Um, hey guys, I'm Alan Samsel, born and raised right here in Licking County in Pataskala. Um, I've been hunting since I think I was eight when I got my first hunting license. Um, squirrel hunting with my dad, rabbit hunting, just. You know, right in right in Kirkersville, you know, not too far from Vance Outdoors. And um, you know, when I was younger, my dad we, we always shotgun hunted when, for deer when we were when we were growing up. And uh, he always, you know, a little bit. If you ever been shotgun hunting in Ohio, it's not the safest thing to do. <laughs> and, uh, I hear that. So <laughs> when I was, I had he made me wait a few years before I would be able to get my license. And then when I finally got my license, I was I was hooked on it. And um, but you know, since I've grown up. A little bit I've sort of you know put the shotgun away and I do mostly mostly archery hunting now here and here in Ohio on whitetails and stuff like that so um, but I, I've always had a passion for the outdoors and 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 hunting and just just being out there yeah. being being outside and, and and doing the things that my dad taught me to do and that my grandpa does sure. or, so sure. it's just it's a it's a great way it's a great way to uh, to you know get connected with yourself and being outside and get away from life and sure. things yeah. like that. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, it's. I mean, Ben and I have said it before to each other, and then online, offline, it's just, just that passion that we have and that escape, if you will, from just the everyday crazy life that we live and, yeah. and, and all the news and media and everything that we get, uh, you know, flooded with all the time to get out there in the hunt. It, it really helps kind of reset the mind. You know, nice break. Yeah. Um, you got kids, right? Yep. Uh, how many? Yeah. I have two. Two kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are they getting to that point yet, where you're? Um, no, I mean, I, my son's more of a sports kid and yeah. my daughter, she's, you know, she's 16 year old girl cheerleader. Yeah, and, yeah, true. Um, but my girlfriend's got, um, a few kids also and her son, her oldest son, Landon, he likes to go out and hunt and I actually took him out last year for youth season got him to, got him his first deer. That's awesome. That's yeah, great. Shot him with a 450 Bushmaster, a little, just a little four point buck, nothing, sure. nothing crazy, but. Get him excited about it. Oh, yeah, he, oh, was, yeah. he was, he was pumped. Yeah. He was pumped. So it was, it was cool to go out and do that with him. And, um, but I mean, you know, one out of five is not bad. <laughs> no, 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 that's 20%. I mean, yeah. that's not real. And then we had talked about it too on a previous episode, uh, you know, just the how cool it is, you know, when I brought my doe home last year, uh, you know, just seeing the look in my kids' eyes when mm-hmm. I brought them home, man, it's just like, yeah, it makes every frozen toe, frozen finger, you yep. know, busted knee, whatever have you, it just makes it all worth yeah. it when you see those kids and, and, and get in kids. And, and I tell Ben all the time, especially, like, when we go to the store, you know, and, and do stuff at the store or whatever have mm-hmm. you, just seeing those kids in there, man, like, it damn near chokes me up every yep. time I get in there just because mm-hmm. you just – it's such a deep connection with family mm-hmm. and um it's cool that you know you pass it down all the way from your yeah. grandpa i actually took out um um my girlfriend ashley's her youngest too and when i shot my buck this year for archery season in ohio i he didn't go real far so i knew where he was at and everything and so i went and i didn't mess with him or nothing like that went yeah. back to the house and got the kids i said come on we're gonna go out and you know he's only 30 yards on the tree stand but i was like we're gonna go out and track it yeah and you know so i'm like find the blood and then we did the whole 
20 yard track deal but yeah it was cool for them that they had never done that before or anything like that and then you know of course the whole rest of the process and everything they were oh, like sure you're gonna put your hands in that <laughs> yeah, that's what we're gonna do so, <laughs> i tell you i think honestly i think uh field dressing is probably the biggest barrier to entry when it mm-hmm. comes to yeah. you know to whitetail hunting in here I, I, I mean i know my first time i was like you want me to do what mm-hmm. like <laughs> i mean especially when you get into the point where you're starting to mount a deer yeah and you're not trying to cut it up as high as you would like a doe mm-hmm. and you're like man you're gonna put your whole arm into this thing to get it oh, dressed yeah. but but as you know man it's just something that you have to do mm-hmm. and you know it i think it, it's very important to do obviously i mean it's important to take care of your animal, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, and, and have as much connection with it as you can. Yeah. Um, it's cool to show the kids, too, what, you know, this right. is where it comes from. This is how you do it. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Can, they can learn young like that and, mm-hmm. you know, maybe pass it on like you are to them. Right. It's great. Yeah, thing. I mean, it's it shows them a little bit more, you know, because all mm-hmm. the hours that you are, if you think about all the hours that you spend hunting in a tree stand or or even gone if you you know go to colorado for 10 days and you're gone you know yeah. it shows them a little bit more about what you're doing yep. it's not just you know just i'm gone and i came back and i got this deer on the wall now yeah so yeah they exactly s- they see a little bit more to it there's definitely more to it mm-hmm. awesome well you segued this perfectly um let's talk about colorado i know you have some other hunts in there as well obviously with your dad and, and things um well let's go to colorado let's talk about that experience uh this year you said 10 day yeah um so this was my third year traveling out west to go uh hunt out there um this year we um i went with a a good buddy of mine Jaden. he's he's a utah resident and grew up hunting out west of course you know he lives out there and so he showed me a lot of stuff and um he's you know sort of taught me in the way and and i actually went to colorado last year with him also but last year I didn't have a mule deer tag. So this year what we had set out the plan that we were going to um, draw mule deer, mule deer tags because I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can't over-the-counter any mule deer tags in Colorado. I think it's, everything's okay. a draw. And now that's not something to be, like, intimidated by because just do some little bit of research sure, into it because sure. it's you don't always have to draw. It's not like a, a thing that takes forever to do. Sure. Yeah. But you can draw a mule deer tag pretty easily if you want to and the right units and things like that. So. Did you put uh, any like preference points or anything like that in no, that system, or is it just no? Up? The unit that we drew that we put in a draw for, <laughs> um, according to online um, research and stuff like that, was a 100% success rate Perfect. or 100% draw rate for zero points. Yeah, yeah. So we had zero points, and we put in as a group for me and him, and then we both drew our tag, and uh, we put in for um, what was the second season? Was the second season, third season. I think it's third and see, third season. I don't know. Actually, I got it right here. I can tell you. He's uh he's getting his uh year amount of the mule deer that he shot. Spoiler alert, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> got the tag in there. <laughs> so I got it's a it was a third third rifle season for us. Okay. Which this year was the season dates on that was uh, November thirteenth to the nineteenth. Okay. <clears throat> so usually in Colorado, that's uh that's that would actually be the fourth fourth rifle season okay but this year they moved everything back a week so so now your third rifle was uh, was actually the dates of what the fourth rifle would have been the year before and which is great it's a great it's a great tag because out there that's your prime time for the rut for mule deer yeah yeah so which means you know deer up and moving and, and everything time. like that and it was uh it turned out to be a really great hunt. We we was at a we went to an area that um, that Jaden had been before. He had hunted it before. I had never been there before, and uh, we seen deer every day. I mean, cool. we went out a day early. We uh, the, the season started on a Saturday, so we got there on Thursday night and uh, got a hotel and woke up in the morning Friday. Was out scouting and, and okay. it's it's a lot of looking. Yeah. There's a lot of looking involved when you're hunting out west and. So we actually had spotted a, uh, we had glassed up a really nice buck. He was probably 190 and he had four or five does with him. And we were, we were like, that's, that's our spot. We're going to, that's where we're, we're going to be in the morning. And, and when we're out there, when we're out there hunting, we're hunting hundred percent public land, yeah. no private land at all. And, uh, and there's just millions. I mean, there's millions of acres out West that you can go out that any of us, you yeah, know, anybody sure. from anywhere can go out and hunt out west and um so you know with that in mind it it is good but it is also bad yeah. because you know we had this buck spotted and he was we hit, we actually spotted him from the road he was about a thousand yards off the road 
um, we had a plan. We were going to go in and we probably have a, you know, quarter mile hike and we would have a nice three or 400 yard shot on this buck if he was in the same area. So we did some exploring the rest of the day, but that buck was on the back of our minds. Like, this is where we're going to be in the morning. And, and, uh, my buddy Jaden, he's, you know, has killed mule deer. He's killed elk. And he says, you know, I want you to shoot this deer tomorrow. You, you got the first choice. And so <clears throat> we showed up in the morning and it was like, it looked like a campground where in this, a quarter, everywhere that you would pull up to the road that there was a pull off for the camper. There, yeah. <laughs> and we were like, holy crap, where did all these people come from? Because they weren't there the day before. Yeah. And sure enough, that deer was nowhere to be found. Gone. And so we just sort of set up and, you know, we were picking off orange off the side of the mountain. And then, you know, daylight comes and you hear a couple shots and you're like, well, all right, well, that's done. We're not going <laughs> to, he's probably dead somewhere. And, <laughs> um, so the hunt continued and, 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 uh, we never seen that deer again, but uh, we ended up we ended up seeing some nice bucks though sure. while we was out there. Well, and the one sitting here on the table is a really nice buck too. Yeah, so definitely. Definitely, definitely have something to be proud of for mm-hmm. sure. So let's um, let's go back just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so as Ohio residents, if people in Ohio or, or some of these eastern states hear this, um, I know some people may understand the draw process. Um, I want to touch on that just real quick. So in Ohio. Um, as a resident, we just purchase our license. Mm-hmm. We purchase our, our permit for whatever species we want to take, and then we can go hunt that species. And so let's talk about a little bit with the draw process and kind of mm-hmm. how that works. Um, if you were to kind of give a 101 on the draw, mm-hmm. uh, how would you explain that to someone who's never been to that before? Um, so just to jump back a little bit, so three years ago when I first went out west to go hunting, I – it, this this whole started off this whole western hunting thing started off as a i wanted to shoot a bear i wanted to shoot a black bear and i started looking into michigan well then michigan has a big a long draw process and i started looking here in um pennsylvania and that was a little bit different and i looked down in north carolina and that was a little bit different well in my research i've realized that you can hunt over the counter out west and then i didn't realize that there was so much public land for you to hunt out there and it's basically you just pick a spot on the map and go, and you can hunt. Um, Idaho is a perfect example, and it's it's a that's a great great place for anybody to go out and hunt over the counter because they have over the counter elk tags and over the counter mule deer tags. And the second part about it is how affordable it is. And I say, I mean, I say affordable to me. It's it's not your twenty dollar Ohio deer sure, tag, sure. Mm-hmm. but I had always had in the back of my mind that you're going to spend five, ten thousand dollars to go out west and go hunt an elk, sure. which is not accurate. Yeah. You can go and to Idaho and buy an over-the-counter elk tag. I believe is six hundred dollars, maybe sure. seven hundred dollars, and you're you're hunting. Yeah, you're hunting elk, and you can go out there and hunt them with your bow. You can go out there and hunt them with your rifle, and you know so that that opened my eyes a lot to it. And that was what our that was you know my first year going out west. That's where we went. We went to Idaho. And, um, you know, the next year, um, I went out to Colorado with an over the counter elk tag with, for my rifle and, uh, you know, just more exploring and more, more research and, and, and everything out West and to where now, you know, you, it's sort of like a, um, like when you're hunting out West, it's a, like a pay to play, you know, you, you can buy these over the counter tags and anywhere you're going to start doing this research, you're going to notice that, um, there's success rates. Yeah. Everything that you buy is going to have a success rate. And I'm not talking like a 80 or 90%. You're looking at 5%, sure. 10%, sure. you know. Yeah. And if you're if you're hunting a unit that's anywhere above 10%, you're doing pretty good. And 10% is doesn't sound really all that great because if you think about it, you go 10 years, you're only going to kill something one year yeah. Yeah. out of that 10. And that might be the first year, but it might be the 10th year oh, also. Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. And so, uh, you know, when – when I started looking into that stuff, it was just a lot of people are intimidate, intimidated by it. Sure. And they think, oh, I don't want to, I'm just going to go over the counter and all that stuff. But, you know, if you can buy, and like this, this mule deer tag, you know, I'm sitting here with my first ever mule deer, which in my eyes was a great deer. And to the out Western guys, they're probably not a big buck, but. 
to me, that's a great. This is this buck was everything I wanted oh, sure. out of my hunt, and it was my first. I had an over the counter real deer tag in Idaho, but it, we didn't even see a buck. You know, mm-hmm. we were over the counter, and I never seen nothing, nothing yeah. with, with horns in a whole week. You know, me and my dad was out there, hiked around five, six miles every day, and didn't even see not anything with horns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, maybe that's your difference in having you know an over the counter tag and a, a draw tag, and um but this draw tag is not you know if you do a little bit of research sure. you can draw this tag every year yep. you know with zero points yep. and it's a, and you can make it a great hunt and it's all about what what you want to put into it yeah, too though exactly exactly yeah i mean I, and i kind of understand the process just a little bit too just for my own self uh obviously this will be, this will be my first year going out west mm-hmm. and so we're going to do uh wyoming pronghorn hunt yep speed goat if you will hopefully we can get that on camera this year um but I, the draw, you yeah. know, well, do I want to hunt private land? Do I want to hunt public land? If I want to hunt public land, then, you know, it's going to take a little bit more time for me to get in there. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with Colorado, obviously. Yeah, you can do over-the-counter tag. Again, it, you tie back to your, you know, your success rates. Mm-hmm. Um, did you use, like, Go Hunt or any of those apps yeah. like that? Yep, yep. I pay so, for the Go same, Hunt. Yep. Same, same here. So I have the Go Hunt Insider membership where it, it kind of helps you with that. Uh, I guess scheduling process, if mm-hmm. you will, or trying to strategize what you want to do. Um, but you know, with the draw, yeah, you do a little bit more research. Well, you might find a unit that can give you the same better odds than what your over counter was for a relatively same right same amount of effort in terms of mon- monetary or whatever have you. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Go Hunt's a great tool. I mean, you can you can I mean, not to promote them, oh, anything, sure, but yeah. you can you can filter everything down to what you want and what you're looking for. I mean. If you want to go out and hunt a 400 inch bull, then you put that in, and then you know it's not a yeah. really <laughs> realistic. It's not really attainable. But yeah. not <laughs> if always. that's what you want, you can put that in there and figure it out, and 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 it'll give you your best place to go. Yeah, and, and you know, but that's a great tool, and there's and there's other ones oh, too. Oh sure, yeah, there's, there's other brands. ones to use. Yep, and I'm pretty sure each each of the states on their their DNR website have your success mm-hmm. rates sure. and your draw rates and, and things like that that you can access also. Well, so it's not something you have to pay yeah. for. No, and that's yeah. where they're pulling that information from too mm-hmm. is through all those and that data. Yep. Yeah, so in terms of uh, states, uh, you said Colorado. Yep. What, what would you consider the most opportunity state? So, I mean, I know Wyoming's a great opportunity state. Mm-hmm. Colorado is definitely a good opportunity state in terms of over counter. You said Idaho yep. as well. Yep. Um, anything else that you can think of? I know uh, Ben and I are looking at going uh, Nebraska this yeah. year as well. Mm-hmm. So mule deer hunt in Nebraska. That's also an over counter tag. Um, so western Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Um, so these, I mean, you got yourself a day drive, day and a half drive. Yeah. You know, share that with a buddy, split the gas, and mm-hmm. and off you go. You yeah, know? I mean, yeah, if you're willing to put that, you know, you drive out there. Like last year when I went by myself last year, I, I made the drive by myself and I drove, I drove out to Kansas, stayed the night in Kansas. And then I went the rest of the way into Colorado. And, but then on the way back, I drove straight through. I mean, yeah. you know, case full of monsters and, <laughs> and get it done. But Shout it was, yeah. yeah, when we went to Idaho, me and my dad went and we, we shared the drive, but we just drove the whole way and it was 28 hours. Yeah. I yeah. think it was 28 and that was just because we got to, we got to a place that was in the evening and we stayed the night because we didn't want to drive in the mountains at night. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, we were where we were headed to was four miles or four hours on a dirt road to where we wanted to camp sure. at. So we were like, we're just going to do that in the morning. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. I don't blame you. So when you went out to do the, the mule deer here that you have with us, mm-hmm. um, did you guys camp or like out, out in country or did you come back every day? Nope. So we got, so like I said, I was out in Colorado last year in 2020 in the same season so we were out there for um actually no we were out there for second rifle we were out there for second rifle and i had an over-the-counter elk tag so we were out there and we were camping that time and so we got out there on friday season started on a saturday and we camped the whole time well we knew there was weather coming in and so we're talking about it was october 22nd I think or 23rd is when the season started and ended on the 30th we were out there and uh we had some weather rolling in on sunday night we were camping in a tent just a regular old coleman tent with a mr buddy heater sure there was three of us and uh it was calling for some pretty cold temperatures and we actually got 18 inches of snow in an afternoon and we were camping in the we're, we're sleeping in the tent and when we woke up in the morning 
we had about an inch and a half of snow on top of us inside the tent from where the 20 mile an hour winds had blown the snow up underneath of the the fly on the tent and (laughs) and on top of us um my buddy Jaden was sleeping in the corner and half the tent was pushed down on top of him from all the snow that had blown up onto us we had that little mr buddy heater and we had to keep it every hour somebody would have to wake up and throw a new um a new tank on it to make sure it stayed up stayed going and you know it was cold it was cold cold Mm -hmm. and uh i mean I'm pretty sure that night we got a negative five, maybe negative ten, and uh, we actually hightailed it out of there the next morning because it was calling for even colder temps the next day, and went we we, we retreated to the Comfort Inn. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> comfort Inn, there you yeah. Go. So we so with that in mind, we didn't plan to camp this year. No, we said Especially okay later in the season too. We're going yeah. two weeks later in the yeah. season. We're not going to go camp. We're just going to get a hotel and just and and be done with it and. Which, you know, the weather out there is sort of like the weather here in Ohio. Is So this year we went out and we had 50, 60 degree temps every day. Yeah. And it was like, well, we could have just stayed in the tent and saved yeah. a thousand yeah. bucks, you know. Oh, but, sure. Um, but if you plan to camp, you might have got the weather and then. Right, exactly. You know, it's crazy. Back to square one. Yeah. yeah. To me, though, like the it, being in a hotel was a little bit better because. Where we were at, the hotel was sort of centralized. Okay. So, you know, when you go out to Colorado, for like for this tag, for example, we had four units to hunt. And so you're talking about a, I don't even know, maybe a 200 square miles, maybe maybe more than that, I don't know. Sure. Each, each unit is going to be 250, 300,000 acres. Do you mind telling us what, roughly where that was in the state? Um, we were just outside of Granby. Granby. Great Granby, Colorado, and about an hour north of 70. Okay. And um, so... You know, when we, where we were stayed at was sort of a central area, and I noticed that, like I said, every it, it's a lot of looking. You're doing a lot of looking, especially when you're not, um, you know, you're not familiar with the area. So we spent a couple of days just exploring and seeing what we can see, and and everybody else is out there also. But there's some of these areas where you're you're driving out, and it'll take you 45 minutes, an hour to get back from the main road onto the unit. We'll say you're camping back there and you're not seeing anything so then every morning you're going to see you're going to spend an extra hour getting out of your campsite to get on the main road and then another hour to go wherever you're you're losing a lot of time there and and this is all my opinion maybe it's you know you might camp in a a place and there would be a a giant mule deer right next to your camp and you know that's all great but sure sure it's public land there's people everywhere (laughs) the the unknown yeah so you know we we it was kind of nice staying at a hotel that you know you had a hot shower every night and you were just centralized where you could say okay tomorrow morning we're going to go down to unit 57 and you know because that's where we haven't been down there yet and then because you you know your units your the units are so big and spread out that you can travel a lot you know so you don't you're not restricted to one area so if but if in my eyes if you're camping you're sort of you know you're sort of locking yourself down to that area. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, sure. and that's and that's and I say that with being a a base camp type of, of yeah, camping. Yeah. You know, you can do your whole backpack camping and you're, sure. you move it around to your thing. But you know, for us, it was we did the hotel thing, and it well, was, especially if you're someone that's just coming out. You yeah. know, you're 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 probably not going to be a backcountry camper. No, you know, you're not probably not going to be hiking in 15, 20 miles. Right. I mean. That's a goal. Like yeah, I, sure. I, I want to do that in the future, but that'll be a September when oh, it's, sure. mm-hmm. it might only get down to twenty five or thirty at night. <laughs> yeah. It's not negative that's temperatures. An, that's an archery only type of thing for me, right? Yep. <laughs> I could have the six degree temps. I think that's the same way with with me and and the pronghorn this year. You know, the season opens up in the middle of August, mm-hmm. and I know it's going to be ninety degrees, but it's better than twenty. Yes, mm-hmm. or better than fifteen feet of snow. Mm-hmm. But. That's awesome, man. The snow is kind of nice. I mean, honestly, when it's colder, you know, is you're hiking. Yeah. And you get hot. Sure. It, and so when it's, you know, when we were out there last year, it was negative 10 the one morning, and um, we went hiking up this mountain, and I'm just in a hoodie and some sure. insulated pants, and I was good. Sure. You know what I mean? You don't you don't sweat, and it's just, it's kind of nice. But yeah. then when you stop, it's... It's, it's cold. cold. It's cold, cold. <laughs> yeah. It's cold, cold. Yeah, when I left Colorado last year, I was like, I will not complain about Ohio cold or Ohio yeah. snow anymore. No, yeah. It was it was a different it was a different experience. Well, that's probably something to touch on too. Now that you talk about that, I mean, not I wasn't really thinking about talking about this, but um, obviously layering systems. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we sell Sika here, Advances. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but how, how different the mindset that is for people in terms of mm -hmm. that layering, you know, if you are out there, you're, you're, you're probably not wearing your, your bodysuit scent lock that you right. would in the tree stand. Yep. You know, you're going to want to kind of layer, um, what kind of system did you end up going with? Um, so I run a, a sort of a, I'll call it a hybrid type system. I, I, uh, when I first started traveling out West, I had to switch everything up, you know, cause here in Ohio, you're, everything's about scent. Sure. Like it really doesn't matter a whole lot. You know, we sit in a tree stand the whole time. And the most important thing is scent. You don't yeah. want to smell. When you go out west, that's not the most important thing. No. They have a saying out west that says that uh, cotton will kill you. So you don't want to wear anything cotton. And so that was when I discovered the layering system, like Jordan was saying. And it, it opened my eyes to, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, some guys will turn their nose up to Sitka and be like, I oh, wear my Walmart hunting stuff and whatever. But I'll tell you, you spend a little bit more money and you're way more comfortable. Yeah. And to me, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna travel out west, I'm gonna travel thirty some mile or thirty some hours out west to hike up a mountain, I wanna be comfortable. Well, I don't, don't wanna yeah. get up there and be miserable. You don't want your clothes being what's gonna set you back. Exactly. There's already enough stacked up against you right yep. now. You don't need to have your, your yep. apparel be what what mm -hmm. makes or breaks the hunt for you. Yep. They say, you know, I hear a lot of guys say you, you buy once, you cry once. Yep. You know, you gotta spend three hundred bucks on a jacket. Hey, you, you hate it for a week, but then you're comfortable Amen. for forever. And, um, you know, so I, I switched up my, my whole system a lot. And, you know, I run the Merino base layers. Um, I run a lot of first light stuff. All my base layers is first light. Um, when I'm out west, a lot of my outer layers are Kuyu. Because um, to me, I, I like the, the, the wind stopping material. And, and Sitka has about lot, sure. lots of uh, wind stoppers. And I, I, have, I have a lot of Sitka stuff too. Um, but it's just, it's, it's a lot of uh, trial and error type of things. Sure. You know, oh, some, some people like different things. And, and, you know, you have to also remember that you're hiking every, everything out there. And you're, you know, you got a pack on your back that you probably have 30 pounds on, maybe 40 pounds, I don't know. You know your coveralls and your your Carhartt stuff. That's great. It worked great in Ohio. But now when you go to hike up a mountain, you know, for example, where I shot this mule deer at was four and a half miles from the truck, and we were a twelve hundred foot elevation gain and drop to get to him. So you don't want a Carhartt jacket that wears that weighs oh, sure. eight nine pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you want your you want your lightweight things that you know that are going to keep you warm, but they're versatile. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's what works well for me, sure. and you know, and it's like I said, it's a little bit more money to sure. spend, but you're, I'd rather spend a little bit more money and be comfortable than, you know, be like, man, I wish I would have bought that, spend another hundred dollars, and, you know, I wouldn't be sweating my butt off right now. Oh yeah, no doubt. I, yeah, it's definitely, you know, I I'm the same way. When, when I was a kid, you know, throw the coverall bibs on, mm -hmm. you know, throw my my cotton hoodie on. Yep. You know, I'm really like, man, why am I cold? And now switching the merino base layers or merino yep. socks or, you know, what, whatever have you. Even non-insulated boots even, you know, mm -hmm. as long as you're keeping yourself dry. Yep. That's the biggest thing. That's the goal. I mean, it's just, it's sweat is a killer, especially when it comes mm -hmm. to hiking out there. How much uh, altitude did you get into? Um, in Colorado, you're, it varies. I mean, you know, when we were, when we were out there last year, there's some of the peaks, um, were close to 14,000. Sure. And, um. But where we were at this year, we were, I think the most we seen was ten or eleven, and that's that's your elk country. Sure. You know, when it starts to snow out there and you get later in the season, your your mule deer will move down, and so they want to stay. Like your your snow line in November is probably around nine thousand, maybe ninety five hundred, but the mule deer moved down from that, and. Um, so we, I think where I killed my buck at was, I think we were 8,000, maybe 8,200. And I mean, that's a whole nother thing, you know, challenges from, for a, oh, for a Midwestern guy, we're at Flatlander. Nine, 900 feet. Yeah. yeah. You know, when <laughs> I went 8, out, 000. when I went out last year, um, in, in Idaho, we were hunting, we, we camped at 7,500 feet and it was mm -hmm. never an issue. Like we were out there the whole time, never, never even noticed it. Um, 2020 comes around and, um. Man, we was out there. We were, we camped at eleven thousand feet, and I had a headache. Sure. I mean, the first day I had been there, I'd spent the whole day in in town, and then when we got to camp, we hiked 
300 yards off to the side of this cliff just to do some glassing and I had a headache I couldn't I couldn't yeah. I was like man what in the heck's going on and you know it's it's just it's different sure. it's the only way that I could explain it to somebody is that it's like somebody you take five steps and somebody punches you in the chest that's <laughs> what it feels like and you know you'll you to me there's nothing for us here in Ohio there's nothing that we can do no. to prepare yourself for that cuz I did I worked out and I went to the gym and I hiked at, you know stair climber and running and all that stuff sure. and then you're still worn out yeah. <laughs> it's just nothing you could do to it and uh, um you just take your time sure and that's that's what I did this year it was just you know we didn't do a whole lot of um I don't know we did a lot of hiking but when I was going uphill like when we, the mountain that we hiked up to shoot this buck, I was just like, I'm just gonna take my time, you know, take a it's nice and slow, you know, don't run up the hill, and uh, and it it was you know it was fine, it wasn't nothing that you can't do, yeah. you know, just take your time and and. And we have another pro staffer, um, Andrew. Uh, I don't know if you've met him yet or not. Um, he's also saying too, like eight or nine thousands are kind of around that sweet spot for yep. people from the east. He's like, you know, you get you get above nine thousand. He's like, he said, that's what I feel like. Mm-hmm. Most people are having issues. Yep. And so you talk, you know, I think that's also a barrier for entry for people too. Yeah. Because they hear all these horror stories about people getting altitude sickness and having to be, you know, flown off the mountain or mm-hmm. whatever right. have you. So, you know, it's definitely you want to put it in in, in your mind. You want to mm-hmm. keep it in your mind. I wouldn't want you to not do something because of right. it. Right. You know, getting out there a couple of days early. You know, right. a you're glassing. Mm-hmm. So you're taking advantage of the opportunity that you have, mm-hmm. maybe at lower elevation looking up, and you're getting your body kind of accustomed to yep. feeling that. Yeah, you got to get acclimated to yeah. it. Yeah. And they have, you know, what I did is they have pretty much anywhere out there you can buy oxygen cans. It's just a little can, and it's like 12 bucks wherever you stop, and you just buy that can, and it weighs nothing. Yeah. So you throw it in your pack. And I would just hit that every once in a while if I was, you know, it's just a little squirt, just like taking an inhaler, <laughs> but it's just straight oxygen. And that seemed to help. I mean, yeah. and even cool. even my buddy Jaden from Utah, he lives in Utah. He was hitting that thing too just because, yeah. you know, this is how ele- elevation will get to you. Oh, sure. And But it, like you said, it's nothing to keep you from going out there. Yeah. Like just I wouldn't say that I would just suggest not hitting the ground and running up the mountain. Yeah, you know? exactly. Get there and spend time and spend time in the – in the town or wherever you're going to be at, set up your camp. But just don't go flying up the mountain. Right, thinking that you're invincible yep. or whatever. Stay, just, yep, stay hydrated. Yeah, I mean, I had, I had a my experience of that. I mean, obviously, I'm from here too, but my experience of that, my wife and I went to the Grand Canyon. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's only like 5,600 feet, but still, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's Denver level. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to walk down, you know, half mile, come back up half mile, and then I was shot the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yeah. you dummy, <laughs> like, yeah, come on, now. you know better than that. Idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. All right, everyone, it is cold and nasty outside, and I don't know about you, but I certainly do not want to go out and shoot in this kind of weather. With that said, our flagship location, Obets, houses one of the most advanced indoor shooting ranges here in Ohio. It features 24 lanes, the mega training system, and a very large training classroom. Check out vanceoutdoors.com range for available rentals, prices, and a list of all of our upcoming classes and events. Again, that's Vance, B-A-N-C-E, outdoors.com slash range. So one place that might not have as much elevation, probably a little bit still, uh, we're coming up on turkey season. I yeah. know you're, you're a big thunderhead chaser. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about South Dakota. You got a trip coming up here soon? Yeah, so I... Um I just recently started hunting turkeys last year. 2021 was my second year hunting turkeys, and I'm I kick myself for not starting earlier. Man, it's it's a blast, and I we know we have a turkey. We have a non-turkey hunter on this table right now. Oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Ben Johnson yeah, I'm over here. About to change him. I yes. keep hearing it. It's really fun. I man, just, it is. Uh, nothing, I don't know if there's anything better in Ohio, man. I've just done. I mean, my experience was I was a little kid yeah. when I went. Couldn't sit still, so we didn't see anything. Sure. And it was kind of a, I don't really know if I want to do it again. Yeah, you know? I had buddies tell me, they're like, it's it's funner deer hunting. And I'm like, you know, around here in central Ohio, we don't really have a whole lot of turkeys to hunt. But I was fortunate enough to be in an area where we had a small flock. And I would see them every once in a while. And um, so I was just, you know, it's, what, it's the turkey tag's $30 or yeah, something nothing, like that. No. I said, 
I'm going to go, I'm going to go grab, I'm going to buy a turkey tag. I'm going to go see if I can do this. And I just, I grabbed my regular old 870 out of the safe and went to Vance's and bought the cheapest turkey shells that you could buy or federal $8 a box or whatever. And so I'm going to go kill, I'm going to kill turkey. And so I go out and, uh, and I'm sitting there and I don't see no turkeys and I I don't have a call or anything. I don't know how, I don't know how to call turkeys and I see a coyote coming in, and I was going to shoot this coyote. I didn't end up shooting this coyote. This is the very first time I ever went turkey hunting, all by myself, nothing. And uh, so I go out to the edge of this this field, and I actually see uh, five. I think I've seen five strutters on the next field over, and like three or four, three or four hens. And I'm like, holy crap! Here these turkeys are right now. So I'm like running through the woods to get down on these, get close to these turkeys. And so I get to the edge of the woods, and I'm watching these things out in the field, and I'm ranging them, and I actually call my buddy, and I'm like, how far can I shoot a turkey? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these turkeys are like 70 yards. And I'm like, how far do you think? He says, I, don't, I wouldn't do over 40. And I'm like, all right. So I'm watching, and I don't know. I mean, to me, I, I like watching turkeys. Sure. Like the, to, seeing a turkey in the wild strutting and doing their thing it doesn't even look real to me the colors that they are and the way that they act it's just like it it makes me smile thinking about it like just seeing it and it's just um it's you don't see it you don't see it all the time and maybe and maybe people do in other places where there's turkeys everywhere but to me like being a first-time turkey hunter and seeing this but that right there doing that first day turkey hunting and you know i didn't get to shoot at anything that day but i was accomplished i felt like i did something right i was in the right area at the right time they didn't see me or anything like that but that goes you know back to the the whole passion thing about about turkey hunting and and, uh so i set out that that year that i was going to kill one and started doing a little more research oh hey guess what you need to put a turkey choke in your gun because you probably couldn't have shot 20 yards with your regular (laughs) regular choke (laughs) you know so i put a turkey choke on my gun and i hunted and hunted and hunted and um didn't even see the turkeys again after that and i finally got one i actually the first turkey i ever killed was actually in the evening and a lot of people don't you know they think you have to hunt turkeys in the morning well i was just i knew where these turkeys were feeding at i knew where they were roosting at and i put myself in between him and or you know the tree and them and lo and behold i ended up shooting a nice a nice uh tom i think he's two and a half year old tom and he was he was a good bird i was super proud of myself for oh, for definitely. shooting that that turkey the that's first really year i ever cool. hunted huh that's really cool yeah it was it was a blast and uh um i just i love it now and and then you know so that was a different type of experience you know shooting the turkey in the evening isn't the same as shoot you know they weren't talking they weren't doing all i mean you could hear them every once in a while but you know now going so then this year or 2021 be my second year turkey hunting i actually tagged out i shot two turkeys you know i you know last year in ohio you could have two tags yeah. which they've changed yeah but, we're actually uh, getting ready to have a biologist on here i yeah. think next week to talk yeah. about that change and kind of what what all is behind that mm-hmm. so that'd be interesting i'm excited for that one too yeah and uh so i i ended up tagging out both tags this year um in ohio went up to michigan shot a really nice bird up in michigan weighed just about 27 pounds up there it was a big bird but it was uh you know it's they they talk to you like if you if you do it right and and you get these turkeys and they they interact with you yeah it's something that deer don't do and that's the difference i mean you can it's it's so cool to be able to hear them and you know this year my first turkey i killed was on the second day of season and i go out bought a couple of uh hk strut uh decoys i got a i had a jake decoy and a hen decoy and i set them out in the field and you know i'm just gonna sit there and you know yelp and cluck and do whatever and you know just some stuff that i had watched a ton of videos of and learning the sounds of and uh you know next thing you know here comes here comes two gobblers coming in and i'm like holy crap this is working like how (laughs) how how is this working and you know those two those two toms come around the edge of that field and they seen those they seen those two decoys and they come running like ran all the way in they both got in and strutted up real big and one of them kicked a decoy and i shot the other one in the head and it was great (laughs) i mean it was i was like holy crap i was i was excited and uh you know it was it's just different man and and Another thing about it is it's 
if you you know best time to go deer hunting in ohio is in november so if you're if you're if you're doing pretty good you you're tacked out you shot your buck by by thanksgiving and if you know a lot of people don't shoot five six seven deer yeah um so you're done in november and then you don't get to hunt again until you know if you're not Dang. hunting rabbits or you're yeah. not hunting squirrels yeah. you don't get to hunt again but if you turkey hunt all april comes around you're turkey hunting for two months you're, you got two more months of hunting to do yeah so it's just it extends your season and you know it kind of it kind of you know gives you something to do sure from that from that cold sure. cold time to then it's summertime and you can't hunt nothing and it's just i love it man shake off that cabin fever yeah yeah for sure yeah, they're they're a blast, man. I there's nothing better. I uh, all the elk people will, will probably hate me for saying this, but it's the closest thing we have here in Ohio to go hunting elk. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, where it's that call, yep. call be called at the mind game. Yep. And the best part, you don't have to worry about scent. Yep. You don't have to. <laughs> that's, that's the Your best biggest, thing. Yeah. They Eat they that cheeseburger oh, yeah. right before you walk in. <laughs> you just can't move. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But no, they're uh, so now you know being out west and realizing all the land we have, there's five species of turkeys sure. in the world in, yeah. in the united states i believe yeah. so now my goal is to go and kill a different a different sure. type and so you know, some mariums yeah, yeah yep so i'm looking at going um to the black hills in south dakota sure. in april this year um to, to go after a merriam turkey sure and the merriams for anybody that doesn't know they're the white real white feathers on them and stuff like that they're a real pretty bird um they, i mean nothing different they're just, yeah, still a turkey just a, just a, cross, yeah. just a different just species a different kind and, subspecies if you but will it's, have you. yeah it's a lot of a lot of big turkey hunters it's their goal they call it a slam grand slam yep grand slam so so yeah i've killed one here in ohio and i've killed I killed one in michigan the past two years but now i want to you know huh eastern yeah right. eastern turkeys yep i can't I, I can only think of the three i think eastern Merriam, and then also is that, osceolas yep. Osceola osceolas down are down in florida. florida and then you got rios rios that are down in texas and, and there's uh, another like one in mexico Oklahoma. there's another yeah, one the mexico. golds gold yeah mm-hmm. yep yep so grand slam yeah one day i mean maybe i'll maybe i'll get them all but my goal this year is to kill a, a, a different species whether it be sure. a rio or a miriam but i'm looking at uh i got i got some dates picked out that i'm gonna go and I haven't decided if I'm going to go to South Dakota or Oklahoma. One of those two. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, but it'd be a public land hunt, you know, go out and buy your tag and, and just go, like, you know, spot, well, on, spot more, on the map. More affordable tag, too. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, you think, or? it's, I think it's around 150 bucks to go to South Dakota sure. for your turkey tag and your, and your hunting license. And I, it might be just a little bit cheaper in Oklahoma. Yeah, sure. But it's all, you know, that's not too bad no I mean, no not, not compared i mean right. it, especially if you're someone that is just getting into western hunting mm-hmm. you know trying to find those smaller game mm-hmm. things might might be a cool entry point for you you know if you're a turkey guy and you always wanted elk hunt well go you know yeah go elk hunt or go turkey hunt in montana or yep. go turkey hunt in south dakota and kind of get a feel of what that feels like with being on that big public lane yeah and i mean i can pretty much guarantee anybody that goes out there and goes hunting out west will want to go back Oh, just sure. because of how pretty it is and yeah. just in the it's i don't know it's, it's something world, you man. have to see yeah. and uh you know it's just it makes it great just to being out there and and uh and chasing you know i like i like to hunt new places and so being it, it might be intimidating some people to be somewhere you've never been before to hunt and, and yeah it's an advantage to know the area but i like i like the the challenge of it to sure. go out and be like you know, this is a place we've never been before and you know after after you're there and you're you're kicking yourself because you didn't know that the mountain was you know five miles in and you're looking at didn't look that far away but you're wishing you knew the area better but um it's 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 great i mean i i I wish i didn't wait until i was 34 to go out west and hunt i wish i would have started going a long time ago but i'm gonna do it every year now so whether it be turkeys or elk or deer or whatever i'm gonna go out there every single year and hunt something so i guess the question has been are you ready to get some turkeys on film this year for vance sure <laughs> there you go yeah. that's what i like to hear i know we had the the pro staff group have that big chat mm-hmm. about doing some turkey hunting down in the southeastern Ohio, like near athens yeah. athens county area so that obviously is, a, is a, a great place especially for public land yeah down there's an area to hunt i've started doing a little bit of research down there and yeah there's a there's a lot of land that you can hunt down there and you, you know, being being a guy from here in Pataskala, and Wayne National Forest was always like where you went to ride four wheelers. Oh, sure, you get yeah, on a Logan, exactly. and that's yep. it. Yep. 
but it's not. I mean, Wayne goes all the way to the river. Mm-hmm. If you go south southeastern Ohio, Wayne yep. goes all the way down there, and there's a lot of great turkey land down there. So yep. that's uh, that's something I'm going to do. You know, I, I, like I said, it's all new places. So, and I've, I'd like to do like the whole. You know, a lot of guys when they go hunting, they or they go turkey hunting. It's a run and gun yeah. type of scenario where it's just you walking through the woods and you're hitting a call and you hear yep. a turkey gobble and take off. And so, yep. yeah. So I mean, I, to me, like if you're you don't have to know the area. You know, if you're yeah. if you're turkey hunting and all you got to do is a little crow call or an owl call in the mornings and yep. wherever they're at, that's where you go. It doesn't matter what's in between. That's so. the funny thing. Like on Meteor, they have that thing like the um, what makes turkey gobble. The running list of everything that makes turkey gobble. Shut and door. Like shock gobble. gobble is shock that what they gobble. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the shock mm-hmm. gobble. Uh, this past year was my actual little first like real effort into it. Yeah, I went a couple of days. Um, effort. I mean, as much as I can with two kids. Yeah. Um, but another buddy of mine that I went to high school with, we went to uh, Woodbury. Mm-hmm. Um, so those of you that aren't familiar, Woodbury is kind of like what would you say like not quite north central, but eastern central yeah about the Coshocton area for those of you that want to look up at public land um but again like you said i pulled into a parking spot no idea where i was at dark Mm -hmm. you know five o'clock in the morning can't see anything hit the crap hit the the crow call or owl call instant right off the bat and it's like there we go let's go you know what i mean and hiking through the woods here off we go we never did get it close the deal on them but Mm -hmm. Still a good time, and it was still exciting. That back and forth, and that chess game about who's going to move, are you going to move, and yep. and the other thing kind of cool is too, is, you know, they know where you are, mm-hmm. and you know, there's research I know I've heard on Meteor podcasts and several other ones. You know, there's research to show like if you're calling from this tree, maybe they don't want to check in on that hen, if you will, right now, but there's a good possibility they're going to come back around and check it out. Yeah, of course, our season here is you know in spring till noon, mm-hmm. you know, so you have a little bit of time, you know. So it's not really that huge uh, time suck, if you will, to yeah. go do it. You know, you're done, you're having lunch. Yeah, the, the turkeys, they're, they're curious. Yeah. They, and they can't help themselves. And it's always funny, like, not being a turkey hunter forever, I'd always heard, like, they got these great eyes and you can't move. And I'm like, well, how come you can put this funky chicken out there and it doesn't even look like a turkey, but they'll come running to it. Yeah. And how, how, how can they not know that it's fake but they don't they yeah. don't care no <laughs> so no, they don't they just they see that little bit and it's like they forget everything that love they're... love does a lot of things to people yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> white tail bucks turkeys <laughs> yep. elk whatever have you so a guy not having any experience in my case is there like a primo spot you're looking for or is it like that when you walk in you're just doing a shot gobble and then you just try to find them i would say um scout because i mean our season doesn't start until April 25th, I believe, is right around yeah, that, that, that time frame, 24th, 25th, whatever that weekend is. But they're going to be out. I mean, I see turkeys. I've seen them driving up through Johnstown last week. So if you got an area, just go out and look in the mornings. And a lot of times, just turkeys will cob- they'll gobble in the morning. You don't have to gobble. Okay. You don't have to do anything. They'll, they're going to be gobbling. Yeah. And uh, so I would just scout. Being where they're at is in a huge advantage mm-hmm. they're not everywhere but being where they're at is going to be a huge advantage so um but yeah and just listen for them in the mornings and you know knowing they're knowing where they're going to be knowing where they are and where they're going to go is a, is a huge thing it's all food sources just the same as any other hunting so, so it look, looks like the uh, season this year starts april 30th 30th april 30th to may 29th is northeast which i believe we're in that northeastern zone i think most of the state is yeah i'm mistaken so um, with the youth season starting April 9th and 10th, so again, that's another cool. T- that's another cool thing to do for kids as well. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't. They're not freezing around that time. I mean, weather can be tricky, but they're typically not freezing in April. Yep. You know, so that'd be a fun thing with the kids too. But we'll get you out this year, man. We'll get you out, and I'm excited because we're gonna have that turkey biologist on here next week, and um, I'm super excited to hear about. It. Obviously, in Ohio, we recently just switched over the one bag limit too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna talk about that and, and other things as well in terms of. Uh, you know, turkey management within the state. So, um, so that is that you got South Dakota. Yep. Uh, what's the date on that? You're headed out South Dakota. The 18th and 19th, I believe, 18th. of April. Yeah. To, to get to marry him out there. Yeah, hopefully. And, and then you got a couple more. Uh, last little bit here. We got a couple more things wrapped up for you in fall this year yep. in Montana, if I'm not right. Um, I'm not sure yet. Ooh. I do. We have plans. Um, I'm going to take my dad back out. To Colorado, I, th- I believe. Okay. I took him out a few years ago when we went to Idaho, and uh, we weren't we weren't able to see anything with antlers. But uh, 
dad was actually fortunate enough to shoot a black bear. Oh yeah, yeah. When we were out there, I remember that picture. That was a cool picture. Yeah, it was the it was uh, you know, over the counter tag. It's forty bucks for a tag, of, you know, in, in Idaho, and you hear you know, it's two guys from that shotgun hunt in Ohio, and yeah. we just drove thirty hours to go out, and we threw a tent up on the top of a mountain and walked two hundred yards and. Dad shoots a black bear in the first 15 minutes, and we were like, holy crap. Can't ask for more than that, right? Yeah. That's perfect. And, you know, but then again, we didn't see anything for seven more days after that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. but it was, um, so I want to, but I want to go out and take my dad out now. Um, we're going to go back to Colorado is what my plan is as far as that goes, unless I end up drawing some, some great tag. But, yeah, sure. um, you know, this, this mule deer hunt from in Colorado this year was, was awesome. I mean, I'll go out and do it every year again. And, yeah. You know, we've seen, we seen plenty of bucks, and so I want to take my dad out and sure. give him the opportunity. You know, he he hasn't – that was his first time ever going out west. and But now, you know, we'll go back to the same area and yeah. we'll, we'll hunt the same places hopefully, and hopefully he can get something like I did. And, uh, you know, that's uh, – that's probably my goal. That's my number one goal. Oh is yeah, to, I mean, if you take, thought, take him out this year. If you thought you were happy when you got your buck, I mean, I can only imagine the joy that you're going to have. If, yep. You know, once the mm-hmm. pops gets one, I mean, that's just yeah. And there's something to be said about you know having someone being that person to help someone else get mm-hmm. their first or whatever have you. Yep. I mean, like when I went out west, my goal was you know I'm going to go elk hunting. I'm, mule deer was mule deer. It was you know I shot big bucks here before them you know we're in ohio great great state to hunt hunt whitetail so mule deer wasn't that attractive to me i guess you would say i wanted yeah. to shoot an elk but then we go out there and i mean it's different it's different yeah. hunting they're they're bigger and they're they're they're, they're fun to hunt they're, they're you know just the same so now i'm sort of uh building some points and and learning some areas <laughs> before i go try to kill an elk yeah. and i mean i had over over the counter elk tag this year and we actually i actually got to shoot at one uh we didn't even expect him to be there <laughs> we were just it was the middle of the day we were like 7200 feet and my buddy Jaden had just shot at a big big mule deer and we actually thought we hit him and um we were he didn't have an over the he didn't have a tag for a mule deer he had or he only had a mule deer tag he did not have an oak tag and he went walking into this thicket in the side of this mountain and Two two elk jump out, take off running. He's, I mean, it sounded like a freight train coming through this woods. I mean, it wasn't even a woods. It was a small thicket, maybe 100 yards by 50 yards. And he's hollering and screaming, shoo, shoo, shoo. And I have no idea what's happening. (laughs) And I see here these two bulls are taking off running. And I'm, you know, here in Ohio, we can barely hunt with a rifle. And so i am got my rifle up with a six power scope on it trying to shoot an elk running at 150 yards it yeah. was just a hope and a prayer <laughs> oh and sure so but it was cool to actually get to shoot at one and um but you know yeah that'll that'll happen oh, that'll sure. happen soon the, the, and uh, but i would be a uh, you know i'm building points in wyoming okay, and yeah. building points in, in montana for a what i like to describe as a quality hunt sure you know you got you got your over-the-counter tag and that's great and people get it done every year, but it's a lot of luck. Sure. You know what I mean? And um, so that's the goal is to get something, get a nice yeah. quality hunt in. Yeah, I have a, a three for mule deer in Wyoming. Yeah. So, I mean, just to kind of, like you said, get get closer yep. towards the national park system out there and kind of get a little bit better luck. Yeah. yeah, yeah well, I'm sitting, at three, I'm sitting at three, too, so maybe we'll need to go out together. There you go. There I got go. three in Wyoming. <laughs> Perfect. So. Perfect. All right, man. Well, it's been a great conversation. I'm glad to have you in. Mm-hmm. Um, where can people find you at Instagram, Facebook? What's all that? Yeah, Instagram and Facebook both. Um, I think my Instagram is asamsoul7, I believe. I don't know if the seven's on there, but you can see me on, on Vance's. Yeah. I'm on there posting all the time. We'll put links down there. In the yeah, show we'll put in the story notes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. story notes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have that stuff prepared. <laughs> no, that's, that's all right. <laughs> it's all good. I appreciate you coming in. Um, that's all we have for you guys today. Hope that you uh, were able to take away from this conversation a little bit. I guess the biggest takeaway that we would have for you is if uh, wanting to hunt out west um, is calling you and it's something that you're really interested in, there's no better time than the present to go ahead and get out there and get after it. So, as always, we appreciate you listening. Um, if you can, be so kind. Leave a comment down below um, if, if, it, if able. Um, give us a rating. It only helps grow the channel. And as always, enjoy the pursuit.